Good morning. How's everyone doing? Nice, nice, nice. Is anyone, is any teachers in here? Can I see your hands of teachers or people who worked in education before? Fantastic. So my name is Mark Martin. I'm a secondary school uh, computer science teacher. I've been working in education for the last 15 years. And um, a couple years ago, I saw that there was a merging gap between the sector and also what I was teaching in my curriculum. And what I wanted to do is kind of bridge that gap, that narrative around homegrown talent. How do we connect more homegrown talent to the sector? So I was able to work with a lot of awesome companies, bringing them into school, changing the narrative that homegrown talent does exist in London and the UK. So the presentation today is how uh, making tech more responsible. Let's give you some stats in, in terms of ethnic diversity in tech. So at the moment from Tech Nation, they've stated that it's 15% BAMES in tech, and that was in 2018 on a report that they had commissioned. And in terms of senior roles, there's only uh, 2.9 BAMES in senior role in tech positions in the UK. But what's really interesting about this is that in terms of how many British-born BAMES are in tech companies, there's uh, 0%. And when we think about building tech products and building tech services and building tech organizations, it's really important that you've got a diverse cohort. It makes sense. We know we've heard it about a million times over the last two to three years, uh, what's happening. So I'm going to hand up. What is the uh, uh, Black, Asian, ethnic minorities. Yeah, if anyone gets their hands up, yeah, please feel free. So, so one of the things that, um, from UK black tech's perspective, is that this is a kind of a concern for us. So I put out a report um, in the Financial Times to talk about the lack of diversity increases the risk of product failures. And we've seen some in the US where um, a, a gentleman was using the hand dispenser and when his dark skin went under the hand dispenser, no um, salt came out. But when um, a white person had done it, salt would come out. And why was that? Probably in the testing stage of that, there wasn't enough diversity within that process. So the lack of, lack of representation affects products, it does affect service, and it affects society. And if we want tech to be more responsible, we need to ask those challenging questions. And over the, the last uh, few years, I've got a few stories to tell about how we've actually got it wrong. And um, hopefully it can help you to understand why this is needed more than ever. So story time. So the BBC contacted 50 of London's 500 top uh, graduate employers last year across the banking, accounting, medical, legal, and retail sectors. 11 were able to provide data relating to the employment of black men specifically. Those 11 organizations recruited 1,803 graduates in 2016. Of those, 30 were black men. Now, if you're in a boardroom and you haven't got that lack of representation, we might think, wow, um, what do we do to solve this? There's a real issue. Is there some biases in the way that we're recruiting uh, uh, diverse talent or individuals? What's happening in this space? So the company then looks at the way they, the, 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 in terms of the process and the pipeline, in terms of how they employ these individuals. And then they think, all right, let's um, use a bit of tech and artificial intelligence to solve the problem. And this is problematic, and I'm going to explain why this is problematic, because sometimes we get the impression that tech, there's a problem, let's just throw tech at it, let's automate it, let's put some uh, technology to sort out the actual issue. And let's see what happens with this, uh, this narrative. So here's me, I've gone for a job. My name's Mark Martin, I'm a computer science teacher. I'm pretty competent in HTML and CSS. So the company says, OK, what we're going to do, not to make sure that we uh, you know, remove bias, we want to create an algorithm that potentially probably renews my name and probably my picture. So again, there's some fairness in the process. And this happens. Now, um, companies probably were celebrating, yes, we've got it. We've got diversity now. So we've removed their names. We've got some uh, fairness within the system. But guess what I want? a student said to me about this? They said, sir. I've worked four years for you to eradicate me. You've, I've worked four years for you to eradicate my talents and my skills so a company can embrace me. Now, a company would argue, but no, we're being fair, Mark. We're removing their names. We're removing their, their faces, but we've got their skills up. 
And that's part of the problem sometimes. When we haven't got the right stakeholders in the room to talk about technology and to talk about how responsible it is, sometimes we miss certain stakeholders out. And then a couple of years down the line, we're saying, oh, well, we probably did make a mistake here because we didn't, we weren't really um, compassionate. We didn't have enough empathy. We didn't really listen to uh, the individuals in this circumstance. So what happens to the individual? They're going for a little while. They look around the scenery. And then sometimes they leave because there's no sense of belonging. They can't um, you know, express their identity in the workplace. There's no acceptance, there's no acknowledgement. So these are the things that, as UK Black Tech, we kind of help companies think about. Yes, we want tech to really solve some issues around the talent pipeline, but are we really taking them, bringing all the stakeholders to the party to have their view and say? So here's a quote from um, an article I was reading the other day. It says, when we talk about algorithms and automation, we can't assume that uh, handing responsibilities over to a machine will eliminate human biases. Artificial intelligence, after all, is constructed by, uh, thought, uh, taught by humans. So no matter how much we want to get sophisticated with technology to solve our solutions, there is still that issue. So one of the things I've been working on is this kind of fancy diagram, because I want to be cool, I want to be that teacher that kind of impresses you guys, like, oh, Mr. Martin's got a nice diagram. And I was thinking about principles, decisions, society, and inclusion. And what that actually means. So when we talk about policies, we're talking about structures. When we talk about ethics, is it fair? Have we got the right people in the room to, to challenge those ethics? And technology, we know that technology, yes, we want technology to solve solutions. All of us want it to simplify things and to help us to do, to make um, what we do on a daily basis better. And yes, we want algorithms to be transparent. We want it to be clear so everyone understands, all stakeholders understands what's happening in this space. So here's another quote. How to ensure that algorithms is fair is how to make sure that the algorithm is really interpretable and explainable that is still quite far off. And this is like a researcher from a university. And he's talking about algorithms in, in its whole entirety. Who really understands algorithms? Who really understands the impact that it will have on our lives and our future generation? And I think that the more we're able to be transparent about these algorithms and these technologies, and doing it for the greater good, then we can move somewhere. So moving the dial, what has UK Black Tech done? What are we all about? So we launched in uh, 2017, and one of the things that uh, I was um, asked a lot is that, Mark, where's all the you know, professionals of ethnic minorities in tech? And where I had the privilege to travel to lots of different companies and to organizations, I said that I see them every day. And it's funny because I invited uh, someone from the government to my school the other day. And he came into my class and he asked his student, and my student was working on what's the future of artificial intelligence in 20 years' time. And my student uh, kind of got his blades ready and said, sir, this is my big moment. And in five minutes, he was able to explain how artificial intelligence is actually going to change the future. And the person from government was like, wow, I couldn't believe that this young person kind of articulated himself better than someone from my staff. And I think... That, that was kind of sad for me because I'm thinking, I see this talent every day. And I think that sometimes in our bubbles, we don't get to see what's happening at the grassroots levels, the impact that's being made. And if anything you take away from this presentation is, is that, who are the people making impacts at grassroots level, doing the things, changing the, the, uh, the narrative? So at our launch, we invite some of our young people. All of these young people own their digital businesses. So um, we wanted to show talent at a young level. We work with lots of other diversity organizations. I don't know how much of you lot know about these organizations, but they're doing awesome stuff in the tech world, from Muslim makers all the way through to uh, Stripes, Color in Tech. Please take a picture and uh, research some of these companies of how they're actually changing the game in terms of diversity within the tech sector. I've got a few minutes left. Um, impact, what kind of impact have, I, have we made in the last two years? Um, it's funny, um, I approach these companies to, Guys, um, you're all working in your own islands to try and solve this issue. Why don't you come together and think about sharing good practice? Because when they first came to us, they said, oh, we've all got NDAs and we've got all competition. But I said, no, come together. Let's talk about how we can share good practice amongst each other. And since then, we've had some really great roundtable meetings at IBM, Goldman Sachs, um, PwC, 
uh, and Facebook and LinkedIn. And it's just a testament that when we come together to discuss these issues, better solutions are made up. I think sometimes when we work in our silos and we think we know what is right, sometimes we get it wrong. We've also liaised with government recently. It was at 10 Down the Street talking about the same issues around how we are kind of challenging local communities to understand tech better. Um, we also help Lambeth Council at the moment. Anyone live in Lambeth? Okay, there's a few Lambeth, <laughs> Brixton Knights or Lambeth people in the, in, in the place. That's great. And what we're doing in Lambeth is that we're trying to help Lambeth um, engage with some of the communities that are seeing the high streets being automated from the Tesco's where you've got the self-service self, uh, self checkout all the way through to the underground where you just tap and swipe. How is technology impacting communities? And back in the day, we'd tell a young person to get a job in, a, uh, in McDonald's. But when you go into McDonald's now, there's touch screens there. So what is the future world of work and how has that narrative been transcended across the whole community? And then last but not least, we released some stock photos um, to, to kind of represent the, the representation within tech. So we're still at an early stage in terms of our development, but we believe that we can make UK the most diverse tech sector in the world. And I think that we can do it by coming together, working at these tough solutions. What does it mean to create real impact? What does it mean to make technology more responsible in our lives? So I just want to leave it there. And yeah, thank you for, my, for having me here today.